Dudes to Dads is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We are back. I am Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads, episode 8 Zero. 80. Alan. Wow. 80. Or octogenarian. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> First this, it was 80. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. That's, a, that's what, almost a year and a half that yeah, we've been doing this. That's right. Um, first, just thank you to everybody who supports us. Um, nobody's doing it financially. <laughs> but I just mean the mental support. Right. Uh, and people listening to us over and over. And if they want to send money, they can. Yeah. We don't even have a tip jar on the website. Uh, yeah, like that. that'd be interesting. Donate. It's all self-funded yeah. uh, just because of passion. Um, but no, I re- we really do appreciate um, feedback and, and the things that people have said. I've just gotten recently some more comments, like even on yeah. our episode pages, there's people commenting. And yeah, it's really cool. It just it feels it it's, it feels really good, and that's the yeah. way that that's the reasons that we do this. Sure. Um, you know, and, and also self-serving that we get to learn about it ourselves. Yeah, yeah exactly. As we move along, so part of the process. Yeah, and uh, today's episode is no different about learning. Uh, it's teaching our children gratitude. Mm-hmm. Fourteen tips to help children be grateful. Okay. I compiled the tips, so it's not just copying off right. other, other <laughs> people. Um, I actually thought of some things myself. But um, prior to doing that and getting into the tips, um, there was an article, Huffington Post, um, the psychologist Jeffrey Fro, he's a professor, so he's, you know, he's smart. He's yeah, smart guy. he's legit. Leading gratitude researcher. So he actually, st- just like we had the other guy that studied, uh, what was the, our previous episode? And the, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, what was it? I, I forget remember. what it was, too. It was, yeah, but it, it was exactly... A week goes real, by and we forget A real specific right. area of study. Oh, it was the homework. The homework, homework study. That's what it was. That's right. Um, <laughs> so he, he wrote a book called Making Grateful Kids, The Science of Building Character. So he created or talks about this thing called the culture of appreciation. Mm-hmm. And basically, in order to do this, we have to recognize three things, and this will help children become grateful. So the first one is the intent. Mm. So, you know, that somebody else put me first. You know, that the, yeah. the person has to realize that somebody else put me first ahead of them. Right. The second thing is the cost. So someone gave something up for me in order for me to get something. And not necessarily money. Right? No, it's money, time, and, you know, anything like that. And I'll give, I'm going to give you an example. Right. And then the third one is the benefit. So what did I get out of this? Mm. Okay. So... An example might be, you say to your child, you know, hey, Rosemary, that was pretty nice of Sarah to help you with your math when she knew you were struggling. Mm -hmm. So that was intent. Right. So you're telling the child, you know, this person knew that you were struggling and as a result helped you. I can't believe she gave up soccer time to help you. Mm -hmm. So that is the cost. Right. So this other, you know, this friend gave sacrifice. up her, yes. Yeah. And, and so the child will sort of see that. Say, well, yeah. she gave up her time mm-hmm. to help me. Mm-hmm. And then as a result, how great that is to know, you know, you now know your four times tables or whatever the math, you know, could be. And that's the benefit. Mm-hmm. So you don't really even, you don't say intent, cost, benefit, or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, kids but you're using this sort of three-pronged approach. And he said over time, he's done research, that the children learn... They just, they learn what this is about. And the fact that, you know, somebody is giving something up for them, they're, they had a good intention, and then as a result, I benefited from this. And, right. and that, that produces that gratitude. It's sort of an organic way of producing the gratitude. Right, right. And over, I mean, this is something repetitive over time, over time. So I just thought that that was really interesting because when I was compiling, you know, I wanted to know too, I feel like, you know, we're not always taught really well to be grateful. Right. You know, it... I shouldn't say that. We, we were taught to say thank you and things like that, but really about being grateful in your life, mm-hmm. about, you know, for the things that you have and, and the people around you and those kinds of things. And it's not that we're not taught that. There's just not that much focus on that. Right. We're, you know, especially in America, we're, you know, we're taught you're, tr- you're supposed to accumulate. <laughs> sure. You know, get things and yeah. do things and all that. And so it, it just, it's really interesting. And so 
this is something that I do want to be more involved with with my kids is teaching them that gratitude because I know just as, as far as being a happier person in general, gratitude's a big part of that. For sure. And does it, you think that it has something to do with a natural propensity for that? Like you, empathy, we discussed empathy prior. Mm -hmm. And so oh, being grateful a lot of times is because you're aware of what the sacrifices are right. kind of innately. You know, so I well, do you think it's innately. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, no, but I'm, I'm wondering if there is a, some, you know, some people are, can pick up on that faster than others, what I would imagine is the case. Yeah. Because it's just some people have a natural gift of kind of understanding things differently or being sensitive or, to people. Or, based on, like, what the stuff we're going to discuss, is it that they saw this being done? Right. You know, so they emulate and they copy because the fact yes. is that their parents or whoever they were around showed gratitude yep. you know it was always like wow thank you so much for doing that or you know i really appreciate that or yeah. however you know nature versus nurture yeah yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm sure it's a combination yeah but, you know yeah. we're yeah. a product of our environment as well for so. sure um so i wanted to go over there's like i said there's 14 tips we can talk about these a little bit this is the, you know to help children be more grateful mm -hmm. and, and things that we can do so the first one we do this when you know kids are very little it's just simply teaching them to say thank you Sure. You know, and you see that from a very little, you know, what do you say? Yeah. You know, thank you. Now, there, we, we sort of just say it, I think, without the meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, like, with, as a parent, it, it might be important to say, you know, Billy just gave that to you. What do you say for, for him because he did that for you? You know, that, like, I think you have to explain it sometimes. Just, what, do right. yeah. <laughs> what do we say? Right. What do we say? I say, ah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when they're real little, that's what happens. Yeah, um, but I think it's always nice to hear younger children, yeah. you know, the saying please and saying yeah. thank you. And, you know, and they start adapting, I think, by the process of doing it, they understand that that's what it means. Yeah. You know, like, when just by, like, you know, maybe at first they don't know why, but then eventually it's kind of used to Yeah, that. and that's, that's the point, I think, of these, is it, it, they're not going to happen overnight. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Right. This is a long... Saying, Thank you for giving birth, Mom. Right. This is a long-term process. Yeah. Um, and so, the second thing, even kind of along those lines, is having them write a thank you note. Hmm. So, not only just saying it, but actually sitting down, if they can write, um, or color a picture or yeah. something, um, now I can tell you these, this, this is hard as a parent to like sit down and do that, you know, cause like you have a birthday party and there's 25 kids and you're like, okay, we need to write thank you notes. Cause you even probably didn't enjoy it either, but it's something that's like, you just should do it, you yeah. know, or now people use email, like an yeah. invite or something and sure. just say thank you. Uh, but it is funny when you go to a birthday party and it's off, it often happens with young kids and the, like you say to the parent, please. Don't worry about sending a thank you card because you know it's a pain. You know, it's like, you on, you're not on Facebook very no. much. So um, when people have a birthday, you get all these birthday right. Never, never, from everybody that's in your network. Right. And some people will go through the trouble of saying thank you to everybody. I do not. I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I just maybe do you like, like it at the <laughs> end. Yeah, so everyone has a like thing at the at the end of the day. I'll be like, thanks for everyone who wished me happy birthday. They pay attention. Thank you. Right. Right. Well, 600 people saying thank you, you know, happy birthday. It's like everyone I've ever known since childhood is on Facebook. I heard you, uh, yeah, I mean, there was somebody connected to somebody else. Exactly. Well, yeah. No, it's, but the idea of, you know, thanking somebody. It's funny, the other day I got a thank you, and it's like I did a thank you of a thank you. Yeah. You know, yeah. I have a tendency to do that. I'm a last word guy. Yeah. You know? Somebody said thank you for something I did. I'm like, oh, well, thank you for thanking me. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make sense. I really appreciate that thing. <laughs> um, so the third one, you know, you can read books or poems about gratitude, you know, because if you're going to be reading, and there, there are books a lot, actually. I went on Amazon and just typed in gratitude books for kids, and it's just, there's a ton that come up. Mm -hmm. So actually teaching them through story or through poem is really a good way. And so, you know, reading at night, especially if they're like a toddler and you're reading to them, that's, that's a really good way of doing it too, um, sort of lessons. Yeah. Uh, number four and I love this one, sharing stories about their past. Um, I love this one, and my kids love this one, actually, where you... <laughs> the kids' past. Yeah, so you actually... Like well, no, but even that, like my month. kids love <laughs> hearing stories uh, about their earlier days. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're six and eight, they love hearing about when, like, my daughter was first born and how he reacted. And, yeah. like, they just love hearing those <laughs> stories. And I think that develops a sense of appreciation for kind of where they came from. Sure. You know, and kind of, wow, you know, I was this age and I was doing this and now, and so it becomes, you know, that, that importance of the story 
and the family and the history and the traditions and all that stuff. And so, yeah, we have all kinds of stories. I mean, there's some, some really funny ones, <laughs> like, you know, when, when uh, my daughter was first born and, you know, people will know what that is when they have, like, she has a blowout in the diaper and, like, my son doesn't know what to do. And, like, I mean, it's just, there are some funny situations. Like, well, I should say, now they're funny. Now they're funny. And they're funny, I can say, because I wasn't there. <laughs> Even funny. <laughs> my wife wouldn't think they're funny. Um, at the time, at the time, it certainly was not funny. You look back and you have a chuckle about it. And so the kids love hearing those stories. Yeah, yeah. You know, or even there's some pictures like of the aftermath. You know, and then like saying, what was that picture? Yeah, have, like, yeah. I mean, so many pictures now. So it's just, you know, I think hearing the stories of the past uh, yeah. helps them to kind of understand that. Sure, sure. Um, and along those lines too, so number five, share stories about their family history. So, you know, knowing where you are from even further back yeah. gives you even greater appreciation. So, oh, sure. you know, the idea of, oh, well, my grandparents struggled, you know, through the Depression and this is what they had to go through. Yeah. Although, you know, whether that's a good thing or not. To, to, but Well, but it is. is. It makes you appreciate things. Yeah. And there's always that old adage when I was your age. Right. right. And so, I mean, but I do like hearing things like that from my, especially my grandparents. Right. right? Who lived through a bunch of different generations? My grandfather's a World War II vet. Yep. You know, so those hear, stories are priceless. Yeah, especially now that I'm older, I understand it way more because he'll tell the, the actual story. You know, instead of this sugarcoated it when we were kids, but when I'm now that I'm an adult. But things yeah. like you know, things like the the way that life was, or you know, mm -hmm. the inventions of things, yeah. and like I mean, we talk about with our kids like you know, records. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, things that like you just don't think are that far like long ago yeah and then it was funny because we had talked about things like that and then in the school the the music teacher had a record player oh yeah so it was like oh and they make the association oh, and big you know, cds right um <laughs> yeah it's just it's really really interesting so that you know sharing stories about the family history and like you know how uh th those connections were made and, and it's just really special yeah. you know and yeah. i think that that allows them to feel grateful for kind of where they came from yeah and, and how they came here so yeah um, number six, at a meal or, you know, at the table, maybe everyone shares something that they're thankful for. Mm. Uh, you know, we've done this at Thanksgiving, but it seems like this could be done a lot more often. Sure. You know, we go around and say, hey, how was your day? You know, but I think of actually saying what you are thankful for. Uh, yeah, and doing that, and, and it can you be did something early on or, or in an earlier episode that you mentioned that sometimes your family would get together and have a kind of a group. Well, there's a feast. Yeah, the, 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 uh, we talked about that, where that's basically saying what you love about each other. Yeah, which in some level, could be very similar. It could be, yeah, yeah. this is yeah. specifically giving thanks sure. um, and the gratitude. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that we have food on the table, mm -hmm. you know, or, you, you know, you can say whatever. Um, and then the, the next one kind of related to that, number seven, writers say something they're thankful for, but it's specific to about somebody in their family. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful that my sister plays with me, mm -hmm. you know, or something like that. I mean, sure. you, you know, and so you can, you know, because especially when they're young, they'll be very interesting what comes out of their mouth. You know, <laughs> I'm thankful I have a pink crayon. You know, I mean, it's, you're like, okay, yeah, that's, yeah. they're thankful for that. Right, yeah. Um, and so you kind of want to direct it a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, not too much because you want to give them the freedom to, to express that. Sure. But just kind of, you know, maybe saying, eh, what about someone within the family? Yeah, really yeah think not Crayola. Them? Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing, uh, number eight, notice little things. So maybe things in nature, uh, the environment, yeah. um, you know, whether it's a flower yeah. or an insect or, you know, a picture of some kind. Though, and kind of stopping and, and appreciating those kinds of things. Yeah. I think gives them gives them that sense of gratitude. My father was big on that type of thing where he'd stop and look at a flower and look like, how oh, clever that is, you right. know, like just something that well, that great. Yeah. And just kind of really noticing those things. He loves nature, you know, in that context. So um, and I think actually the whole family's kinda of like that, but I didn't really think about it until now. Yeah, I I don't of, think I grew up appreciating little things so much. I what I trigger as beginning to do that is when I started doing meditation. Mm. That was the first time where I began to slow down a little bit, and actually it was funny that the meditation teacher, I used to go there like on a regular basis, and he said, you will begin to appreciate littler things, yeah. and I was like, what are you talking about, and I remember then coming, like even coming out of the gym, which I've now told the story, but I come out of the gym, and I'm like smelling the air, Yeah. you know, which now in the mornings, it's kind of like a, a routine thing where sure. I come out, I'm like, 
and like just take a deep breath yeah. and sort of stopping for a second and, and appreciating that. Whereas, you know, I think long ago, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many years, I didn't necessarily do anything like that. I didn't. Right. I didn't even really think about it. Yeah. You know, there wasn't a, a, a pause or a stop. And I think also to children, uh, children help with that. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have kids, there's like some small little things that all of a sudden, or even having a spouse or a significant other, yeah. I think you start to notice things in other people, or you start yeah. to notice, like, wow, like, that's really cool. Yeah. You know, and especially with kids, because everything's new to them. Yeah. So any little Seeing thing. Seeing through their oh, eyes. Oh, look at that thing. It's you know, like a robin or something. I'm like, yeah. That's a bird, but yeah, it's a bird. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like you said, if you, you know, going in through into nature and things like that, when you start seeing it through the eyes of the kid and yeah. how much, I mean, like, you know, we go camping and pretty frequently and like, you know, if they see a bug or a snake or something, I mean, it's just so fascinating to them. And so you become fascinated with it. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. You know? um, that's so yeah, it's, it's, it is fun. So, Animals in nature are the most fun with it. Oh, totally. Uh, number nine, have them make something for someone else. So draw a picture, build something. Um, just the idea that they are thinking of somebody else, and kids really actually do love that. I mean, especially their parents, where they're like, oh, here I drew you, you know, my yeah. 500th picture. And like, thank you so much. You know? um, and like, where am I going to put all these? You yeah, know? exactly. It, it, the fridge is full. I know. And, uh, but those kinds of acts are very nice. It's like, well, thank you for doing that. You, know, you don't have to comment on how amazing the picture is. You just right. say, thank you for drawing it. That was very nice sure. of you. You know, to do that. Uh, or they could build something or whatever. Um, number 10, you know, have them do something nice for a neighbor. Hmm. I like this one. Um, this was maybe, you know, raking neighbor's leaves or washing their car, or take out their trash, something. Yeah. I know, I mean, we're lucky. We live in a neighborhood where um, we have such friendly neighbors, and they often do things for, I mean, for us and other people. And so it's really, I feel like, you know, almost like a, I'd say an obligation, but it's like sure. you want to pay them back yeah. in some way and be nice. And so, you know, we talk about that with our kids. It's like, you know, what could you do to help out mm -hmm. and do that? Because, you know, I mean, people will bring over food. I mean, when it's, you know, unsolicited. Yeah. Just, you know, hey, I made this. I thought you might like it. It's like, oh, wow. You well, know? I, I would like that. <laughs> yeah, no, and it's just really a friendly yeah. environment. And That's so great. that idea that we can teach our kids, like, hey, look what they just did for us. You know, and not that you have to feel obligated, and that's not why you're there doing it, right. you know, but you're, you, you kind of just, it, it creates that circle, you sure. know, where you, people are doing it for you, you want to do it for them. So it's like extended family. You know, right totally, right. totally, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's not a, like, an, like I said, it's not eye for eye, like, or, like, right. you, know, you do something, now I got to do something, you yeah. don't want to do that, but, right. um, but you definitely want to feel that appreciation. So, uh, number 11 Give them experiences versus stuff. Um, there's definitely a desensitization mm -hmm. when you accumulate a lot of stuff. Yeah. Where I can see, I mean, we don't buy a lot of things, but yet our kids have a ton of things. And that's just sure. accumulation from hand-me-downs sure. to gifts from other people. And you, I, it, you can see the desensitization. It's like that nothing's really a big deal. Right. You know, there's, you know, so what? I've got 10 of those. You know, like, <laughs> right. it doesn't really, it's not really that big. So the idea of, like, with gifts, of doing doing things and experiencing things, and, and, and my mother had always said this about, like, you know, um, anniversaries or birthdays and things like that. She always had said, you know, let's do something yeah. instead of buying me something. Yeah. And I've kind of taken that on, too. I always was like that with, you know, birthdays and, and everything else. Like, I'd rather just go do something. And yeah. you have an experience and a memory and create a memory versus stuff. Yeah. And I think that helps create the, the gratefulness and the appreciation sure. as well. Um, number 12, help them figure out what matters to them. So that's really about finding a purpose for themselves and, and, and allowing them to make choices on what's important to them. And so I think that helps them feel gratitude mm -hmm when they have like sort of like a vested interest in whatever it is that they're doing. So when you have a child, like for example, that, you know, um, that chooses a sport on their own, mm -hmm. they're going to probably have a greater appreciation for that because they made that choice. You know, they were the ones who were allowed to do that versus, you know, hey, I think you should go into the sport. We're going to sign you up. And do, you know, 
there's not a, a connection to it, right? You know, whether it's a sport, a, an art, or whatever. So the idea of you know helping them find that passion mm -hmm. and allowing them to choose that, I think, can help create more gratitude. Sure. Um, and at least that's what a lot of the experts say. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the so even gratitude. if I said it, yeah, yeah exactly. the gratitude expert, the gratitudeologist, <laughs> the gratitudeologist. That's a cool one. Is that taken? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, number thirteen, volunteer in the community. You know, and that's a given. Uh, sort of giving back to the community. You know, uh, the idea of feeling grateful for what you have, and as a result, um, you know, you're going to help others, and that's just simply a feeling good and feeling grateful for what you have. Yeah. Um, you know, I and I I know that one firsthand. You know, that was the dudes to dads, and, and feeling like I'm very grateful for what I have and the position that I have. And I think doing that makes me feel even more grateful. Yeah. You know? Well, and he, like you just alluded to or just mentioned that that was the impetus for you starting News to Dads as the meetup group. Right. And really the impetus for this podcast. Yeah. But I mean, but originally it was the meetup group. Like I said, we're not getting paid. We're not getting paid. <laughs> you wanted to give back to the, the dad community, like right. what you learned and what your experiences were and you were still going through. Yeah. But um, you had a different insight and knowledge to it, and so therefore you gave back to the dads and, and you found that there Yeah, there's no question that doing this makes me much more grateful f with, for my family and my children and my wife and all sure. of that. It's, it's, um, you're reminded uh, you know, a lot of kind of reasons why you do all these things. Yeah. And, you know, and, and also how to make them better or easier. Sure. You know, I mean, that's like I said, the self-fulfilling, you know, prophecy of, you know, oh, I get to learn all this stuff, yeah. you know, and then also help people in the, in the process, so right, right. it's pretty cool. Yeah. And the final, uh, the final one, which is by far the most important, is leading by example. Yes. So, a huge one. yeah, monkey see, monkey do, we, we really, we talk about this with everything, it's, you know, you cannot teach a child gratitude if you are not doing those things yourself, mm -hmm. you know, um, same thing with everything. Yeah. Don't eat sugar, and then you go and eat sugar. Yeah, you know, like, get back in yeah. your mouth. It's really important <laughs> that you exercise, and yeah, you're right. saying that from the couch. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, play while well, Daddy watches TV. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you have to lead by example, yeah. and they're gonna see it, and they're gonna know it. And so the fact is that if you are helping the community, if you are the one being nice and helping neighbors, if you're the one who's you know doing something for other people, writing thank you notes. You know the way that you speak to others and being gracious and saying thank you and all that. They they're going to do that too. Right. You know they're going to pick up on that. So that's an important thing. For sure. Um, how do people get in touch with us? Podcast at deucedads dot com or Twitter at deucedads, Facebook deucedads com, and any other channel. Get uh, YouTube. 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 Yeah, go to YouTube. Or on YouTube. Subscribe to YouTube. And matter of fact, go to either YouTube and especially go to iTunes and Stitcher. Um, subscribe to those, hit subscribe, leave some comments. That helps kind of perpetuate the system here. And we feel good when you do it. I told you, we had quite a jump in our listenership. Yeah. Uh, listenership? Isn't that I think word? that's right. I, I, you know I like to create words. I agree. <laughs> our listenership apology. <laughs> uh, we had quite a jump over the last two months. That's great. Um, you know, and granted, we're on our 80th episode. Yeah. So, you know, like right. now there's a lot of content going on. Pick it up, Steve. Yeah, so well, thank you great. once again. Thanks, everybody, for doing that. International crowd as well. We'd love to hear from those of you outside of the U.S. Um, you know, it's, it's just great to hear the different perspectives and different things. So, yeah, I'm um, always curious about that. I know. Yeah, we have to address that. It's, you know, it's, it's very, you know, when you create something like this, too, you're, you're essentially speaking to yourself. Sure, sure. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it and the yeah. most real and such. Yeah. You know, when I, when I am talking, I'm talking about the things that I experience and that I know. So it's hard because there's so many other people out there that aren't the same. Right. You know? Right. They have different life circumstances, different situations, different, you know, ethnic, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Where exactly. they're from, their backgrounds. So it's hard... You want you want to try to relate to as many people as possible, sure. but at the same time, there's a there's a, there's a niche in which to keep it the most authentic. Mm -hmm. You can kind of only talk about what you know. Sure, <laughs> you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I can't really you know talk too much about what I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I wouldn't know it. Who's <laughs> on first? <laughs> so uh, with that, thank you, Alan, as always. Thank you. Uh, and we will see you next week. See you next week.